Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, this is Tony Day. Today what we're going to be doing is looking at Zcam footage and we are going to be using color management, we're going to be using uh, some LUTs that people very much like, and we're going to be exploring using red IPP2 mapping with Zcam. So first I've got to give a shout out to Roger in Finland. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel and he has a lot of really great stuff on here, so please make sure to go visit his channel. Um, maybe w uh, watch some videos, give him some likes, subscribe, all of those great things. Um, he really did me a, a solid by giving me some uh, footage to play with here. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Roger, for your help. Also, if you could, please give a like and subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more content like this. And also, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tony Day. Okay. So let's get into this. Um, so here's the shot that we're going to be working with. It is a plus one exposure. Zcam, uh, from my understanding, uh, says that you really should be overexposing uh, middle gray by one to two stops. So we're going to be using the plus one stop here, uh, since I think that's going to be the most commonly used one. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is use the Zcam LUT that uh, I downloaded from their website. As you can see here, um, this is what the transform is doing and I'm just going to adjust the uh, exposure before the LUT and get uh, the gray here to go around uh, the middle here at 48 and we're going to see that um, it does do a job of transforming and everything uh, the only problems here and I'll try to explain this the best way that I can uh, it's it has a way of um, truncating the shadow values at a certain amount it's got a uh, uh, shadow uh, uh, roll off or a soft clip down here and a lot of people don't really like this and they end up getting stuck with that if that's put into you know a manufacturer LUT so um, that's something that I like to avoid because I if I'm gonna put in a um, shadow roll off I kind of want that myself like I want to do it myself you know and then also uh, another thing is that we're working in whatever uh, color space and gamma that Zcam has which is in Zlog 2 over here so if you don't like working with that and you use a LUT in this way, you're kind of going to be stuck here, okay? The other thing about using a lookup table like this is that you're not going to be able to use a color managed workflow. And you're also going to be stuck with whatever transform that they're doing here and have to work around that. Uh, and I don't really like that and a lot of people don't like it either. So we're going to hit control home and we're going to explore some different options. So let's open up our settings and we're going to just look at this. We got our, uh, we got a HD timeline that we're going to work in for this video. And if we go into color management, we're using DaVinci Wire GB. And for the timeline color space, I'm just going to pick Rec 709 scene for now and hit save. So the first thing we're going to do is explore using a LUT that many more people enjoy using over, uh, I think any other general LUT and that's the RE Log C LUT. So let's go in here into LUTs and we are going to go into Ari, and we're going to find the one that comes with DaVinci Resolve, which is an Ari Alexa Log C Direct 709 LUT. And we're going to throw that into the last node here. We'll call that LUT, okay? But the transform is not going to be correct, so what we need to do is get into Ari Log C and uh, Ari Color Space here so that this LUT will work correctly. So we're going to put a Color Space Transform at the beginning. We're going to call that in. So with this Color Space Transform in the input here, it's usually pretty easy. We would just go into the camera uh, manufacturer's uh, color space and gamma, but the problem with Zcam is that for whatever reason, their color space and gamma is not available in DaVinci Resolve. I don't know why that is, uh, but this is why a lot of third-party plugins and that kind of stuff exists. So what we're gonna have to do is pick the uh, closest relative to whatever is going on with Zcam. I've used every color space and gamma to try and figure out which ones were the closest. And the two that I've found are really, really close to getting a proper Rec. 709 transform is Sony S Gamut 3 Cine and Canon Cinema Gamut. Um, the only real difference that I've found in at least this test and the other shots that I've tested this on is that the Canon Cinema Gamut tends to give more saturation and, uh, than the Sony S Gamut 3 Cine. So we're going to pick S Gamut 3 Cine and the input Gamma, we're going to pick Sony S Log. And I found that this is the closest 
of all of the gammas, uh, it's almost dead on from what the lookup table is doing as far as being able to get it uh, into the uh, proper transform into Rec. 709. So we're going to pick uh, input gamma of Sony S-Log. Output color space, we're going to pick Ari Alexa, and we're going to pick Ari Log C for the gamma. We're going to turn off the tone mapping here. So because this is a plus one exposure, we're going to have to bring the exposure down here. We'll call this exposure. And then we're going to take offset and just pull that down like this. Okay. So now, as you can see, we've got this transformed into Rec. 709. We have uh, no uh, soft clip on the shadows. Uh, and there's nothing being, uh, being cut off here. And we can actually add some contrast if we'd like, like this, to get a little bit more going in here. And I'll just drop the shadows down just to show you that there is no uh, destruction of the shadows when we pull down like this. So we can have that, have like deeper shadows if we want, okay? So we'll do like that with it, okay? Now, in here, we're going to do our white balance. So we'll call this white balance and we will select, uh, we could select over here. The only thing is that the white is in the vignette um, and there's a white over here that's less in the vignette. So, you know, you can pick whichever one, we'll pick that one and then, you know, so whichever one they'll be, I'd say close enough to uh, do for this uh, tutorial. We're just gonna do a quick white balance with the medicine dropper like that. So you can see the difference there. We'll go into the vector scope and you can see where that has shifted everything. Now, if we look down here in the vector scope, we can see just how close this all is. We have uh, blue pretty close to where the LUT was. Uh, cyan's very close to pointing the correct direction. Green is pretty close. Yellow is pretty close. Magenta is pretty close. And red is pretty close. They're all pretty much where they need to be. We could just make a few adjustments. The skin tones are right there along the line. They're not dipping too far into the greens and not too far into the reds. So we are going to create some uh, color adjustment nodes. So we'll just call this color adjust one. And we'll have this one ready just in case. And in the uh, color adjust one here, we're just going to go into the color warper and we're going to leave it on six points and we're going to go into HSP log. And all we're going to do is pull the handles of our uh, colors here on the edges to get them pointed to more correct locations. So red, we'll just go ahead and uh, select that. And we'll pull the hue over to the right. So we can see that's the dot right there for red. Magenta, we'll just, uh, that's looking pretty close. We'll just push that a little bit toward blue. Blue, we will, just for sake of getting them as accurate as possible, get it more toward blue. Cyan looks correct. Green, we'll pull that toward yellow and yellow looks like it's where it's supposed to be. So we have that there, and now um, that is looking pretty good. Uh, if you want, the reason why this is down here, we'll call this color adjust two. What you can do is use an eight point color warper. We'll grab this one, which is more the skin tones. And you can, if you watch over here, you can pull the skin tones to more of where you want and then try and correct red back where you want it to go like this. So basically all this does is give you just a little bit more control over what uh, you want with your colors and your skin tones and all that kind of stuff. So we'll just leave that the way it is right there. So if you like this look and you, you've you corrected it for what you're gonna do, you have the contrast and the exposure and everything like you want, this, is a, this would basically be like a plus one exposure lookup table. You can right click here, generate LUT. You can create a 17, 33, or 65 point cube. Uh, we'll, do, we'll just do a 33 point cube for this one. And uh, we'll save it out. So we'll call this Z, Z cam uh, plus one rec 709 V002, since I already have a first one. We'll hit save. And now you should see it here. I've saved it here in my uh, Daylut uh, Zcam stuff here. Um, here's version one. 
Uh, here's version 2, so I'll just create a new corrector. We'll do like this. And I'll throw the LUT in, and now you can see we've got that transform. And if you compare, you can see that these are going to provide a very, very close uh, rendition. Any differences will be pretty much imperceptible. Um, and you can use this, uh, you should be able to use this, that is in your camera, as a reference LUT. Uh, or a LUT that you can bake in, things like that. Okay, And if we go into the waveform, you can see that we've got that pretty much the same, right? Okay, and a 65 point LUT will be a little bit more accurate and uh, have less values that are destroyed. So 65 point LUTs work really great for a post. 33 points uh, seem to be what cameras need. Okay, so let's delete that. And now what we're gonna do is use a different LUT in preparation for the next part. Um, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna reset this node uh, what we're going to do is use a red IPP2 LUT, which a lot of people also like. Uh, if you like the red color science, a lot of it has to do with the way that they use the red IPP2, which gives a lot of different looks um, pretty quickly. So, you know, here's all these different uh, LUTs that you could download from red. And so we're going to use high contrast and very soft. And that is a transform that it'll give us. We'll go over here to exposure and we'll reset that since this is a different transform happening with this LUT. And we'll also go into our inputs here and we'll change this from Ari Alexa and Log C to red wide gamut RGB and red log 3G10, okay? Because a red LUT is going to be expecting their red color science, their uh, color space and gamma here, okay? Now we're gonna expose the shot. We're gonna fix the exposure that is. We'll just pull it down like that. And now we have our transform. And that's already looking pretty nice. If we go into our vector scope, we can see that the colors are still pretty well mapped where they need to be. We'll just have to make a few minor adjustments. This is a different way uh, to uh, transform it. And then also we're gonna be working in this different color space. So these tools will affect colors in a different way. Okay, so anytime you change your outputs here and your in uh, input color space transform, you're gonna need to make a few adjustments down here. Okay, so find whichever uh, color spaces you like working in and probably stick to that. So green we adjust, uh, everything else looks like it's pretty good. Uh, blue, like that, okay. And I'd say we're pretty much done with that. Okay, so now we have a red IPP2 uh, LUT and we can of course if we wanted to um, save out a LUT I'm going to right click here generate LUT uh, we'll again make a 33 point cube we'll call this Z cam uh, plus one we'll call this just to make a different red IPP2 rec 709 V001 save do the same thing just to check to make sure that our LUT did what it was supposed to. We'll go to uh, save it in day LUT, Z cam, and it was this one. So we'll put that in. And then we can see here that it does exactly what it is supposed to. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is look at color management. And we're gonna first simulate it using this node-based workflow. And it's basically the same as we did before. The only difference is uh, the output is not going to be a LUT here. We're gonna use Ari Alexa and Ari Log C. A lot of people like working in this, that's why we're using it. We're gonna reset this. We're gonna call it out, throw in a color space transform. We're gonna go from Ari Alexa and Ari Log C into Rec 709 and gamma 2.4. Now this is important, and we're gonna leave the uh, tone mapping method to DaVinci. You can pick whatever you want in here, but I found DaVinci works the best. And you can see here that our colors are pretty well accurate, just leaving it where we had it before. We can make a few minor adjustments here. And that's looking pretty good. And for exposure, 
we can get it to be more of what we like. So we'll just pull this up like this, add a little bit of contrast like that, pull that down. And now we've got a uh, color managed simulation using notes. And again, I won't show the full process, but we can generate a LUT with this, and this will be like a color managed workflow version, okay? But this is just a node-based workflow. But what if we want to use color management in here? Well, I'm going to show you. So what we're going to do, we're going to just hit Control Home to reset. We'll hit the gear here. We're going to go into YRGB Color Managed. We're going to go into Custom. We're going to check this box that says Use Separate Color Spacing Gamma. You must do this or we're not going to be able to choose the right stuff. Now, you're gonna set it up as I'm gonna do here. We're gonna choose Sony S Gamut 3 Cine and Sony S Log. The timeline color space, we're gonna continue working in Ari. So Ari Log C and Ari Alexa V3. Output color space, we'll pick Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. And the output, we're gonna leave it as uh, DaVinci. We'll leave this input DRT as it is, okay? We'll hit save. And you're going to notice that for this clip, it didn't do anything. And the reason is that it's probably tagged uh, with a color space and gamma that's not correct or it's not recognizing what we selected as an input. So I've got two clips in here. And there's a couple ways that we can make sure that these clips are being transformed in our color management uh, pipeline correctly. We can, uh, in the color page here, we can either multi-select clips in here, or if you did what I did, I created a Zcam folder, I go in there, I hit Control A, right click, input color space, and we're gonna choose Sony S Gamut 3 Cine, and then we're also gonna pick, for the input gamma, we're gonna choose S Log. So if we go back and forth between these two clips, you can see that they are now being transformed in Rec. 709 in the color managed workflow when they weren't before. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the offset just like what we did before. And you can see that we're already in Rec. 709. We didn't have to create an in and output node uh, to do our transforms. And we can do exactly like we did before. We can add some contrast like this and make it look more like we like. So we'll call that exposure. Then here on white balance, we'll go ahead and balance off of the one closer to his skin here, this white one here. Okay. And we're going to go into the vector scope. And you can see how close we are. Look at the skin tones lining up right there. Okay, skin tones are pretty much right there on the line. And we've got all our colors very, very close to where they need to be. So just like before, we're going to have two color adjusts just in case we need them. And we're going to call this color adjust one. This one will be color color adjust two. Here, we're going to go into HSP log and move about our colors like this, just to get them accurate. And you can, of course, use this as a. Uh, you don't have to make them accurate like I am. I'm just using them at, to make them accurate because, you know, that's just the goal of this particular uh, way that we're doing this. Um, you basically can do this to make it look however you want. If you want blues pushed towards cyan or greens pushed toward yellow, you can do that here. Uh, I'm just making them accurate for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, and we'll pull that saturation back a little bit like that. Here, again, we'll just make it into the eight points. We'll take the skin tone line here and just pull it slightly back over like that. We'll just uh, do a, an increase in saturation like, like this. And let's just say that that is uh, done for the sake of uh, this tutorial. We'll call that saturation, okay? We'll just clean this up a little bit. Like that. Okay. And now we have this going into color management and making these corrections. So of course you can save this out as a power grade. All you've got to do is go over here, power grade, and grab still. And now 
this is saved out as a power grade and we can change it we can uh, change the label here and we can call this zcam uh, rec 709 uh, p grade or something o grade p grade or something like that you can call it whatever you want and now if we were to reset all these all i have to do double click this and now we can see that the power grade has been thrown into here so if you're working in a color managed workflow you can always have the same node structure set up uh, exactly as you had made it originally so let's uh, actually test that with this shot this shot was made available by zcam themselves so uh, that's why i'm using it uh, just as uh, you know it's a, such a difference from this one that uh, we should be able to test if it works correctly for a shot like this so go into the gallery double click our power grade and now we've got that power grade put in to this shot and it's looking pretty good just the way it is um, the white balance is probably not correct so we're just going to reset that and uh, we'll just kind of clean this up a bit uh, let's see clean up node graph okay that sometimes helps but not always so we'll go like that okay alrighty so that's looking pretty good I mean that's looking pretty good the way it is the only thing I'd probably do is maybe decrease the contrast go into our waveform uh, where's our skin at right there We'll probably pull this exposure up a bit like so maybe drop the shadows a little bit to get a little bit more contrast in the hair and under the dock and now we're done uh, with just getting this into rec 709 okay and I'd be pretty pleased with with this kind of image I think this looks really nice okay uh, and the colors look pretty well accurate, uh, which is the goal of this. Um, you can always make this more creative with whatever you want to do. But again, the goal of this is just to get these to look a bit uh, more accurate and use it in color management. Okay. Now, the last thing um, with color management, the cool thing is that uh, you can, if you'd like, change the output uh, mapping to red IPP2. So if you want to use reds IPP2 mapping with your Zcam, you absolutely can do that and have it all put in the color management workflow. So we're going to use my favorite, which is high and very soft. We'll hit save. And now you can see that it's been transformed differently. Now, uh, obviously because of the difference in the transform, you'll want to make some adjustments to everything, but it's, it's uh, going to give you a look pretty much well, uh, straight out of the box. So, here in the exposure on this one, for example, we'll just bring the contrast back and we'll pull the exposure down like this, get it to have like a little bit of a darker feel to it. And I'd say that we're pretty much done. Let's look at our vector scope. And as we can see here, the colors are pointed where they're supposed to go. Um, and the good thing about using color management with red IPP2 and using the settings in here, such as color space aware grading tools, um, and staying in the same timeline color space is that when you change to something like red IPP2, your colors should not be adjusted that much. It's just the way that it's outputting, whereas all your controls are pretty much done the same way in your timeline color space. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So we've got a uh, color management workflow. We can, um, you know, have this, uh, the output color space go to uh, whatever it is our display is, and we're looking pretty good there. Uh, let's go to our second shot and we will just uh, just like what we did with the previous one um, We're just going to adjust the offset Make it look a little bit like that and I'd say we're <laughs> it's looking pretty good just the way it is um, I, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. I'd say that so far with Zcam um, as long as you do something like this where you can uh, have a bit more control than using lookup tables or third-party uh, plugins uh, I'd say this is uh, this is pretty good as far as accuracy. I'd say this is about as accurate as uh, I would ever need a shot to be um, And it all it takes is a little bit of adjustments and getting the right inputs in there um, At some point I'm hoping that DaVinci Resolve and Zcam get together to get their uh, color space and gamma put into Resolve But until then I'd say this is a pretty good workaround so if you uh, so that's all I've got for this video. If you like this uh, content, you'd like to see more content like it, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. And also, again, please consider uh, becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tony Day. There's all kinds of great things in there. Uh, there's uh, lookup tables, um, power grades. In fact, I'll probably make these LUTs and power grades available 
on the Patreon page. So please uh, be sure to check that out. So I do hope that this was very helpful to you, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.